Thank you, Sawei. Uh, give me this opportunity to present a very, very short feeling about the new demand because um, I saw the audience mix academia and also the practitioners. So we know the first wave of the Chinese investment come to UK is demand for acquiring so-called hard power of companies or industries like manufacturing industries. I was involved in um, acquisition of a Chinese company acquire one of a manufacturing company in Manchester and I was the advisor. Start from the beginning, work with Chinese government and being a uh, teach them, or not co-teach them, advise them how to negotiate with, uh, with the company in, in, in the Manchester and then complete them and then also follow up their the post-acquisition things. Um, that's the first wave, manufacturing. Then now, what is the new wave of the Chinese company come to the UK or come to Europe? And what's the demand for? I uh, possibly you say, oh, we know that, um, is, uh, which is what uh, we call a property uh, investment. Um, the property, and they are interested in buying anything, which is a shopping center, office buildings, student accommodations. I mean, I work with um, one of uh, foreign Reserve Bureau, they have an investment company in the UK, in London. And they asked me, Guy, um, do you have any good projects with your student accommodation? They have uh, so much money, they just did a job with spending money. Spend money safely and um, with a reasonable return rate. Their expectation is 5%. They don't ask him too much. 5% or 4%, but with a safety, which is secure that the investment will be not lost. They are happy about that. So they even interested in accommodation and they ask me talking about with Brunel University, do you have any accommodation you want to sell or want to invest? We're happy to join. So that's a good. And also shopping centers, you know, the Bista village, most of the Chinese um, people go there to shopping. Now it's the Chinese investors, they acquire a majority stake of there. So it's surprisingly, they are entered into from a manufacturing industry to other, which is service industry. Um, Sport as well, we have a good sport club here, and they're interested in buying them there as well. I mean, never, never had it before. Sport club, okay, how can you move sport club from the UK to China? Basically, they try to copy the model of the management and they use that name and put it into China. So, what we said that uh, UK's model, China's market, and the UK's management model or technology marry with the market, that is what is a profit and growth. So that's basically the motivation they are keen on acquire, even including movies. You have heard um, Mr. Uh, Wang Jianlin the board, uh, to buy the, you know, the cinema uh, companies. So this sort of new things, which is, uh, it doesn't happen actually before second half of the last year. So this is a new phenomenon. And then, because the time is so short, so I, mean, I only can give you a question. You tell me what's the answer. Another thing before I, I, I give you the robots, Chinese, you know, they have a cheap labor, a lot of populations, but also we know that recently they have a shortage of labor. So they are now keen on to acquire any company who engage in the robot research, rob, uh, robot research and, and then and the production. Because they are short of labor. And they want to use a robot to replace the labor and to compete against Vietnam, these are cheap developing countries. So that's a new phenomenon up here. Um, I think it, at the university, I know that Oxford University have a good research in the, in the robots. So this is uh, something, and the semiconductors, I mean, frankly speaking, Chinese company has started to interest in semiconductors start from 1998. I was an advisor for Siemens company in selling the semiconductor company in uh, Newcastle. 1998 at that time. So early, which the Chinese hasn't wake up at the time. They always think, oh, you know, foreign investment. They always uh, should be Western country come to our part, not Chinese money go to us. That was 1998. No one understand that, which is a semiconductor to come out. And the new castle, there was a brand new semiconductor company, which make uh, the most advanced chips at that time. And the selling price is about uh, 700 million. Pass. And I was advised for Siemens. Unfortunately, Chongqing government was interested. But for some reason, it was 
you know, was not successful. The reason it was not successful is because as a Chinese government, they have something internal fights and then a result of the failure. Now, you, we have a lot of academia here, including the, you know, the university authorities level, pro vice chancellor level, and, and also pro vice uh, 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 and the chancellor as well. Vice chancellor, I ask a very simple question: Are you ready to take a Chinese investments at any level? Particularly the education center. You educate the entrepreneur, you educate the company, say how to work with Chinese companies. One day, Chinese company or Chinese private entrepreneurs, they come to you and say, I want to invest in a university, but I want to have a certain percentage of return, which is reasonable, 5%. Because university is the most safe investment. Have you seen any university bankrupt in the UK? No. Do we need the money at the university? Desperately. Then I will prepare to take the investment, particularly private investment. I can tell you that I have a few of the private entrepreneurs ask me, guy, find the university. How do I invest my money to them? How? Are you prepared? If a company is easy, look, this is my shares. I can get this, this uh, accountant firm to buy my shares. Then ask a very simple question. Does any UK university issue shares? Everyone knows that. If not Sunday, tomorrow, 10 million pounds, I could show that in, in, in the research assessment, which is uh, 2020, he will become a one of the top universities, if he got 10 million pounds. He can use that to buy the best researchers. Everyone knows that. But everyone knows that. Where to raise the money? Where? Particularly the UK university, and then we, the UK, as a country regard university as an industry sector. Then, this industry sector has to prepare to take a foreign investment. I am engaged, but still in the confidential stage. In this sense, and I found that. Because, because of this thing, it drives me to learn the whole UK higher education sector, I'm a professor, suppose this is not my business, it should be the university people, the top level, you know, understand what means the degree of voting power and how to get them these sort of things. And the farm actually were not ready. Why? Possibly you know why. I leave these things for you to have an open think. Thank you very much. I think we, we, can, we can take one or two questions from the audience. I think the, the lesson from this is uh, that it's the human uh, dimension. And we heard that this morning, really, that came up again and again from the, uh, the uh, minister, uh, councillor. He emphasised the, the personal relationship. Uh, I think we heard it also later in some of the presentations. And this demonstrates the real effect 
that those personal relations can have. So given that they do have this, uh, that this uh, uh, tangible effect, it makes sense to then employ them in a way to achieve some strategic goals. And, and I was uh, very uh, I'm impressed with the, the responsiveness, the 30 percent, etc. These are big numbers. And, uh, and also you see it's a strategy that is on the part of the Chinese cities to do this outward lookingness. And it was a tired concept, uh, latterly, not immediately after the Second World War, but it, it, like many things, it's, it's found a reason to, to exist again. It's found a new reason to exist. And it is that those personal relationships are very important. Even if the United Kingdom had remained within the European Union, or was, re was remaining within the European Union, I personally hope it somehow does, but that seems a bit of a forlorn hope. But the truth is, even if we were in the European Union long into the future, we would still need to attend to these sort of missions which would actually bring about real personal relationships uh, which from which would then be generated uh, real opportunities. So I think this demonstrates more or less the limits of top-down policy and the benefits of policy coming up from the, from the bottom. And I think one of the reasons we're here in Northampton today is because of the entrepreneurship that is shown by University of Northampton and its uh, members of staff, not least the one that's walking around in the front here. Uh, yeah. Comment on that. And I think two things. Firstly, just the scale of China for if you like, a, a, a company or an area to go to China and find the right relationship is made much easier if you've got a firm relationship city to city. So therefore you've got a, a better starting point than if you're just going scattergun to China. So there's something about, it doesn't surprise me in the sense that sister cities are, the, are much stronger in a sense than we have found economically than European cities. Second thing I'd say, which again, this is, you know, I'm, I'm not an academic, I have no evidence of this whatsoever, but I also suspect that with, if you like, uh, countries like China, which sees a much greater state involvement in economics, that actually twinning at those regional city levels is again a much stronger base than we have with our European counterparts, because we do not have that intertwining of state and, in, and economics and employment of businesses as the Chinese do. And I think the other lesson for me to come out of this is where are the other places in the world where that sort of relationship, and again, I, you know, I, India is an interesting one to me, mm. having been to India. India also, unless you go to the three or four places that everyone knows and everyone goes to, the rest of India is a, a, a sort of closed book but actually working on proper, civic, established, strong links between certain places may well be the best route post-Brexit if we're going to have to do more of that, where we can actually, if you like, unlock something which matches the culture of the country we're going to far more closely than what we've done in the past, which was said that the reason for the European twinning was entirely different. It had nothing to do with commerce as such. It was something to do with building relationships after the Second World War. But I think this is a really interesting piece of work. Thank you. That's better. A question in terms of Chinese investment, obviously, in looking at the market, establishing itself. Probably a question to Professor Gai Lu in terms of the strategic um, imperatives there. Are there short-term returns that are more important than longer-term investment strategies there in terms of UK build? Or are we looking at a sort of worldwide perspective of um, different uh, amalgams, effectively, of investments? Is there some flexibility, or is it more a structured approach in terms of long-term returns? One is the government, which is, uh, for example, there's a huge uh, foreign reserve, which is three trillion US dollars. This kind of investment they are really looking for, which is uh, safety is the first, and then with a reasonable return rate. And they can invest on anything. For example, in your council, I guess that you have a rubbish collection business. Are you willing to put them, say, look, 
Could you invest on that? And I allow you to have the, the rate. And this is a very, very safe business. Rubbish creation is a monopoly, yeah? Every household needs to have that. You can use that and say, look, I put these things on the market. Because once you get the money, don't worry about it, you know, they take that, they certainly they're looking for the return rate. But you can use the money, for example, you can sell it at 10 million pounds or 20 million pounds or 100 million pounds, up to the valuation. And they use that money to create other things. So that's make, which is uh, something which is, uh, we are thinking about the second tier of the investment, which is much easier to be dealt with and much forward the private investment. Don't undermine Chinese private investment. I mean, I had been working with uh, Chinese large corporations which they owned. I still working with them. But right now, I found that more and more my EMBA students, the old private entrepreneurs, goodness, they don't know how much they have. They come to me and say, guy, look, what sort of investment you can go have? Safety, because I need to guarantee my asset safety, and then second, reasonable return rates, 3%, 5%, 4% would be reasonable because I need to guarantee my retirement arrangement. Invest on Chinese-owned properties, you see the bubble there. Buildings, few buildings are not available. How about others? Then, you rubbish creation business. Okay, do you want to buy it or do you want to invest it? And then I could tell you, 10 million pounds, did you like that? And then sometimes I feel in personal experience deal with private enterprises. As long as I trust you, the trust is most Chinese. The key determinant about your investment success. If they don't trust you, you just forget it. If they trust you, they just say, okay, I trust you. You say the rubbish crest business is a monopoly, just say, tell me tomorrow, open your, tell me your account number, boom. That's it. As, as straightforward as that. You say invest on the UK university, tell me how they invest, how they guarantee my return. Is it safe or is it not safe? Any university, as long as you've got wording power in the UK, you know that, how profitable it is. But how do you sell them? How do you sell them in the, in, in the sense that you use the money raised and then to create other things and then growing your university in a much, much faster way? I don't think right now that in the UK public sector, public, including university, including a council, some services, well, basically council, services are not available. But I do know that some councils, they do have a commercialization of their business. Then are you willing to put that sense to Chinese investors? If you are, we can talk. Thank you.